in my mind, what makes Stanford Health Policy unique are three things. First is enormous technical capability. Second is the commitment to transdisciplinary engagement. And third is a commitment to social justice, to equity, and to humanity. We have a new department of health policy in the School of Medicine under the leadership of Lloyd Miner, the dean of the med school. We are tremendously excited. It's going to enable us to enhance and expand the scope of our research and our training programs and provide a place for health policy activities for scholars all across the university. The last two years have been a very demanding time for people who study health policy, but if there's a silver lining, it's that the visibility of public health has been elevated to a level that it never has been before. Stanford is an enormously interesting and interdisciplinary place. We sit on a campus here where the law school, the medical school, the undergraduate campus, the engineering school, business school all exist within close proximity of each other and people really do talk and do research and education across the boundaries of these places. And that makes it an extraordinary place for Stanford Health Policy and the people here to do our work. The idea is we have health economists, stat statisticians, clinicians, lawyers, people with all sorts of different types of expertise and disciplines. We also have people who come with a lot of different methodological expertise. So if you look in our toolbox, the list goes on and on and on in terms of the types of tools that we apply to these very real-world challenges in ways that have the potential to not only push the field forward, but also our ability to translate that into changes in practice and policy that can make a difference for the communities we care about. Stanford is synonymous with innovation, and I came to Stanford because there's no other place really in the world where I could do the most innovative health policy work and the most innovative of work in AI and machine learning. So Stanford Health Policy is comprised of two entities, this new department of health policy in the School of Medicine and the Center for Health Policy and the Freeman Spogli Institute for International Studies. So this is a unique situation which enables us to study health policy and health very broadly, not just health care, which of course is extremely important and in some ways our bread and butter, but also health and governance, health and climate change, health and war. There is an urgency to what we do. And with my colleagues around the world, and certainly here at Stanford, we have a strong collective commitment to act and to ensure that our work is expressed as improving the situation in the real world on the ground. As our portfolio of research has expanded, the methods that we use expand also. So for example, we're now doing work in artificial intelligence and machine learning because those methods are going to be crucial in healthcare. We're doing work in gun violence. We're doing more data science work than we've done before. Gun violence kills about 40,000 people a year and injures three to four times that amount of uh, the population. It's an issue that reverberates throughout a community when somebody dies or there's a mass shooting. In every respect, it's a public health issue and one that we need to study. Unlike purely academic research, which proceeds at sort of its own time frame and its own pace, um, working directly with policymakers about urgent decisions requires being highly responsive. One example of this was our COVID modeling and uh, making projections of cases, hospitalizations, and deaths at the county level for California. One of the key outcomes we looked at was hospitalizations and trying to make projections of how high hospitalizations might be in the next weeks or months, basically to support resource planning. One of my research areas is on the topic of paid family leave. One of the things that we've learned through all of that research is that the benefits of paid family leave are pretty large, especially when it comes to things like maternal health and well-being, infant health and well-being, just family well-being. I've developed different mathematical models of different types of cancers, like colorectal cancer, cervical cancer, gastric cancer, and bladder cancer. We developed the models to evaluate different strategies and interventions at a population level across a whole cancer control spectrum, from early detection, uh, screening, prevention, uh, all the way to treatment, surveillance, and even palliative care. A very important part of our work is making sure that our research is grounded in real clinical issues. And many of our faculty are physicians, and that gives us the ability to understand problems from a clinical perspective and make sure that our research is relevant in answering questions that will improve the lives of patients. 
working uh, with patients on a day-to-day -day basis allowed me to see issues with the patient. For example, their social circumstances, including insurance, access to food and housing, and how that impacts the patient's overall health and the family's ability to provide uh, a good care for the patient. We have two main missions at Stanford Health Policy. One is research and the other is education and training. It's a very important part of what we do and we have a PhD program, a master's degree program, we have postdoctoral fellows, pre-doctoral fellows. We teach undergraduate and graduate courses across many departments. So one of the great things about Stanford is being able to take all these different classes across all the schools. And just having the flexibility to do that has been the highlight for me. It's really important to work with students, to engage with students, because they are the next generation of health policy thought leaders. And working with them enables a broad and lasting impact of our program. Health equity really should be something that's important to all of us. None of us wants to live in a society uh, that has unjust inequalities. I think we all want to live in a, in a world in which we acknowledge health as a human right. Uh, everybody really should have the opportunity to, to live a healthy life.